welcome to this conversation, our Sassy Talks. Today we're here to, with the MEP, Mr. Cyrus Anger. Thank you for being with us again. Thank you for, for inviting me. Sassy Talks are part of the project WEP, which is Workers and the European Parliament. We want to bring to the attention of citizens the activities of the European Parliament and the importance of the EU in our everyday life and in our work life as well. Today is a very important topic. We're talking about health and safety. And Mr. Anger, what has the EU done so far to protect workers from occupational safety and health risks? And could you mention maybe some highlights? Yes, I, I think that the EU has done a lot, especially uh, us coming from the socialists and democrats who have the workers at heart. So uh, in all that we do, in all policy areas, we try to find the interest uh, of, of, of the worker in what we do. Um, but I think that the EU has been instrumental in the field of occupational health and safety. And especially with the adoption of the framework directive on occupational health and safety uh, and what came after that, the subsequent more specific directives that uh, adopted, which have been essential uh, in creating uh, common minimum standards to be followed across uh, Europe, which was also a good thing because then we have seen them being uh, copied as best, best practices elsewhere as well. So. Um, the common approach in this and managing occupational risks uh, across member states, I think, has been uh, quite a success. Obviously, there is still much more room for improvement, especially with regards to the need to revise some parts of the existing laws to bring them up to speed with the most recent technological and scientific developments, obviously. Uh, there are also gaps which I believe are still uh, needed to be addressed and which the European Parliament has repeatedly called for such uh, address as the need to cover, for instance, uh, occupational risks which are not covered by the existing legislation, for example, uh, those relating to mental health, uh, the aspect of which uh, obviously needs much more clear action uh, and which is put in the spotlight, especially now with the COVID-19 pandemic. So I think more has to be done now on the, the mental health as well, apart from the, the physical safety uh, of workers at their place of work. Absolutely. And uh, the more we focus actually on health and safety, the more we research and the more attention we actually give to the this area, um, the more we find out also about uh, minerals or uh, exposure to different materials which are dangerous to the human beings. and. Uh, for example, can you say to us why is asbestos dangerous for workers and what is, how is the EU addressing this issue? Yes, um, I was the shadow uh, rapporteur for my political group, the Socialists and Democrats, on the opinion on the asbestos uh, law um, when it comes to the ANVI committee. So from an environment and public health perspective rather than from a, a, a workers or work perspective, which in any way um, it obviously impacts the workers at their place of work. Let's remember that between 54 to 75% of occupational cancers are lung cancers and asbestos is the main cause of lung cancer. 80% of occupational cancers recognized in Europe are asbestos related. So it is an important area to discuss and to take concrete action on. What is really tricky with asbestos uh, is that it can take up to 40 years to manifest itself in a human being following exposure to that uh, material. So this creates difficulties for patients to get compensation because the link with the occupational aspect is not that straightforward. It is also noteworthy, I believe, um, with regards to asbestos, is that it is not, uh, it's a, it's a non-threshold cancerogen. So, uh, therefore, any level of exposure is harmful, which makes the matter even more pressing. So, whether you're exposed to a lot of it or just a, a little fraction of it, it impacts people's lives. So, that is why it is very important that although asbestos has been banned in the European Union since 2005, Many old houses all over Europe contain asbestos. Many old buildings and workplaces contain asbestos. And we, with the upcoming renovation wave uh, in the European Union, workers will obviously be at higher risk because we know that asbestos becomes dangerous once it is disturbed. And this is a clear example that asbestos is not a problem of the past, 
but it is actually a challenge that we have today in the present and there are many cases of asbestos related diseases that are expected to peak in the European Union before 2025. So as to European Union action in this field, we see that uh, cancer policy is being given more and more importance at EU level. This year we have seen the adoption by the Commission of the Beating Cancer Plan, where a legislative proposal is envisaged for 2022 to further reduce workers' exposure to asbestos to protect them from cancer risks. And also one of the goals which the European Parliament has been striving for in this area is the review of the existing binding occup occupation exposure limit value of asbestos to take account of the latest scientific knowledge and technical developments and we expect the Commission to come out with the, these changes in the near future. Uh, in the ample report, for instance, that we're discussing in, in Parliament, um, which now will be going to the plenary in the months to come, we as members of the European Parliament are also calling for various initiatives in this area, for example, the introduction of mandatory screening and subsequent removal of asbestos and other dangerous substances before renovation works start in the renovation wave. Uh, because at the end of the day, we need to protect European workers before this work commences. So we're seeing a lot of movement in this area at the moment. Absolutely. And it is important to see such movement because when it comes to health and safety, we should never put our guard down. So our guard should always be at maximum level. And uh, as you were saying before as well, um, more should be done about mental health. It is one of the things that has come up, especially during the pandemic, with more people working from home and feeling isolated. So as a last question I want to ask is, what other safety issues do you think the EU should regulate in the future? Yes, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there are many gaps which need to be addressed in the area of occupational health and safety, and where the European Parliament is being very, very vocal on them. And as you mentioned, these include the need for a bigger focus on mental health. Uh, we need to recognize that anxiety, depression, burnout as occupational diseases. And the changes in working patterns, such as the rise of telework, for instance, following the pandemic, has led to a need to revisit several aspects of occupational health and safety. Uh, for example, the rise of um, muscular disorders, or uh, in more simple terms, you know, the injuries resulting from repetitive motion, which comes from example through poor home workstations. Uh, we need to constantly update our laws to reflect new the, the new realities we are living in and therefore I see a lot of room uh, for action in this area in the months and years to come. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Anger, thank you so much for being with us today. This one is a very important topic, especially due to our trade unions because we want to protect workers while they're working. So thank you so much and uh, we'll keep thank updated you. in the future as well. Thank you. It's always a pleasure meeting you. Have thank a good you day. again. Bye.